Hello, Carly McAvoy here. Today I'm talking about congruent and similar triangles. They're two um, different concepts, but they're related. So uh, congruent triangles have the same shape and the same size. The corresponding angles and the lengths of the corresponding sides are equal. And I drew these by hand. They're not to scale, but if I show you these two triangles, you should be able to discern that they're actually congruent because I have a a side that's three, a side that's seven, a side that's nine. It doesn't matter the orientation. They could be twisted and turned a little bit. still makes them congruent. So when we say corresponding sides are equal, what does that mean? Well, it means that this side three corresponds to that side. And so we make a mark like that to say that they're congruent. Okay. And then we have a seven These that corresponds to this side. And then we have nine that 9 corresponds to this side. So we would say that the segment AB corresponds to the segment DF, and AC corresponds to DE, and so forth. It's not important for you to do that right now, but in other classes you will work with more of that. So what are the corresponding angles? Well, you see how this E is between 3 and 7? Then the other angle that's between 3 and 7C, that one corresponds to that. So E and C are corresponding angles because they're between the similar sides. Over here we have uh, A, which is between 3 and 9, and D, which is between 3 and 9. So for here, these two angles are would be the corresponding angles. And finally, the last one is between 9 and 7, so they have... Um, their corresponding B and F. We put the little marks to kind of show that. So that's corresponding sides for congruent triangles. Now similar triangles have the same shape but not necessarily the same size. So for instance, here's a picture of two triangles that are similar. They're similar because when you compare the sides they have the same relationship. So let's look at these two sides here. We can say that 1 is to 3 the same way that 2 is to 6. Is that true? Well, 1 third and 2 six, 2, two six is 1 third. That's true, right? And so if I ask you then, well, how would you figure out this side? Let's call it x. If I know that it's a 1 third correspondence or ratio, comparing that as 1 to 3, I would say, well, I know that um, 3 is to x has to be equal to one-third because that's the relationship I saw. One is to three is one-third, two is to six is one-third, so three is to x also has to be one-third. And then you just solve using the proportions that we solved before. One times x is x. You're cross-canceling to do that. I mean cross-multiplying, sorry, not canceling. And three times three is nine. And so we know that x must be 9 because that's the relationship or the ratio that we saw between those two triangles. Okay, if we know that two triangles are similar, we can solve for a missing side, which is what we just did. And so now I would ask you to try that. Again, always, I can forget to say it, but I mean to say, pause the video, try it on your own, come back and see how you did. Okay, so we know that these two sides are corresponding, so 5 is to 60 as 3 is to x. Okay, we can set that up. 5 compares to 60, and that relationship is going to be the same as 3 to x. There's more than one way to write this. This is just the way that I'm doing it. If we cross multiply, we get 60 times 3 is 180. I'm going to bring it up here because I don't have enough room. And 5 times x is 5x. Then I solve that by dividing both sides by 5 and I get that x equals um, what is that? 38? Uh, you know what? It's okay to use your calculator if you can't think on your 36. Yeah. Um, 180 divided by 5 is 36. So what I know is um, oh yeah because 3 times 12. Duh. Okay that would have to be 36 because that would give us the same relationship. In other words, 3 times 12 is 36, 5 times 12 is 60, and so that's the relationship. Okay, one more that you could try on your own because it's got a fraction in there. It makes it a little more interesting. 
But what I know is that x compares to 6 the same way that 13 and a half compares to 9. And so you can work that by changing your third, multiplying. So we'll do that. We're going to multiply 13 and a half times 6 and 9 times x. 13 and a half times 6. I can change it into a decimal because half is exactly, or I could change it into an improper fraction. I'm just going to do 13 and a half as 13.5. If it was a third, I wouldn't be able to do that. But I can do it if it's exact. 13 and a half times 6 is 81. And then I want to divide by the coefficient, and 9 equals x. So I know that. Um, x here would have to be 9 to have the same relationship as the 13 and a half does to that 9. Okay, have a fantastic day and we'll